Hello, this uh, this week's uh, Claremont Calling, um, we have uh, two items really. The, the second will be Dorothy Lynn speaking about some of the brownies and some of the work that was on and has been going on uh, under lockdown. The other is going to be an interview with Anna Weir that I'm doing. Um, we were sure that we had a, everything set up for a very smooth transition from Anna um, being session clerk um, finishing, as, as she said she would after 10 years in session clerk, uh, uh, very smooth that going on over to uh, um, uh, Morag Drumgold. However, um, it's going to be on ice for the moment just because under the lockdown uh, scenario, we're not got a care session meeting, but um, Anna's continuing as clerk, Morag's poised, and the next time we have a care session meeting, um, we're going to be making that change. Um, and so I just thought it'd be a good chance for us to get some reflections from Anna on her 10 years, 10 years of session clerk. Okay, Anna, so roughly 10 years since it, since it all began as session clerk, and uh, I suppose you weren't exactly sure what you'd let yourself in for. Did it turn out to be what you expected? Um, well, you're right, Gordon. I wasn't exactly sure what, uh, what it would all entail. I knew it would be... Um, doing minutes for kick session meetings and getting that organised and organising elders for communion duties, etc. Um, I don't think I quite realised how much other things from Presbytery or 121 uh, would come, things like uh, statistical returns and, and that kind of thing. Um, but actually, when uh, as, as you start to doing that, although it seems a bit daunting at first, uh, as as you go through the years, it's the same kind of thing each year. So, and you know how then to get the information and how to fill out the forums. So it does get easier, uh, and you get a bit more confident in doing that. Um, it's one thing actually that people said to me when uh, when I decided to take on session clerk job. Uh, one or two people said, "Oh, that's that's a thankless job." which thankfully, and I'm very grateful that it has not been a thankless job in, in Clermont uh, because we've got a really good core set of, uh, of elders who, who are great to work with and I've been really pleased and happy to be working with them. Yeah. But that core group of elders is a bit, uh, bit smaller than once was the case at Kurt Station at, at, at Clermont. So do you think that's a failure that the leadership group like that's got a bit smaller? No, I don't think it's a failure at all. Um, it's sometimes people think, oh, yes, you know, more would be better. But uh, I think you've got to stop and think that quantity doesn't always uh, equate with quality. And although there are, are less elders now, um, the, the, the elders we have do, do a marvellous job. And yes, of course, over the years, there's been elders who have passed away. There's been elders who have gone on to the retirement list. Um, but uh, the ones that we have just now are very committed and very regularly attend the, the cut session meetings. And I suppose that uh, it may be the time in the near future to think if we could get some, some younger folk to, to come on to and consider the eldership. Uh, none of us are getting any younger, I suppose. Um, but the, the folk that we've got just now are, are doing a very good job. And I suppose the, the decline in, in numbers in, in, of elders just mirrors what's happening in the church itself. Um, there, the congregation numbers have gone down quite substantially over the, over the years. But I do feel that the people who now attend church um, are those who are committed and who attend very regularly, there's not the same difference in numbers for, say, a communion Sunday that there maybe used to be. Um, and many people are more involved now in, in the running of the church and, and helping in the church. The session clerk's uh, remit is pretty varied. Um, what what um, part of the work have you enjoyed the most? I think, first of all, was getting to know the, the fellow elders more. Um, and I suppose that although I, I was part of this kick session for quite a while before I took on a session clerk, um, I was also doing a lot of the work with the deaf folk and that tended to be something that I did on my own, not with other elders. But um, 
I'm very appreciative, appreciative of, I appreciate very much the, the, um, the support and the fellowship that I've had with, with all the elders. Um, it's, I've never um, had to wonder if, if, if they would do anything that I've asked them to do. And very often, if there were districts needing covered, for example, or for an, an elder who had retired or who wasn't well, um, there's always been someone there to volunteer to, to cover and to help out with that. Um, one of the other things too, Gordon, is has been working with yourself. Um, it's uh, much, much easier and much more rewarding to uh, work with someone whose main aim and main focus is to, to bring more folk to faith in Jesus Christ and to whether that's at a, a first profession of faith or whether to help folk within the church to um, improve their, their walk with Jesus. Um, it's the, there's been a lot of growth, I think, in Clearmont in the past 10 years uh, with a lot of hard work from yourself, elders and others in the congregation. And I've, I've really felt privileged to be part of that. Well, would you say that's been the main change in the congregation in the in the past ten years, or other things that you've noticed changing over that time? Well, um, when I thought about uh, Kirk session meetings, actually, and I remember going to Kirk session meetings where you know you turned up and proposals were put forward, you listened to reports, and then you said, "Yeah, yes, okay," or "No, I don't think so," and more or less that was the involvement. Um, I do remember one of the, the first times of Kirk Session being asked to think about a proposal, go into small groups and discuss the point and, you know, maybe 10 minutes later come back with their answers. And there was almost a kind of communal intake of breath to say, what, 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 what to go and discuss this? But uh, actually now it's just part and parcel of Kirk, Kirk Session meetings and uh, people are quite happy with it and quite easy with it and realise that's the best way to go forward. Um, some of the other changes, I suppose, the, the church role, which obviously I have to send in and count up and keep, keep an eye on, um, has um, decreased quite dramatically in the past 10 years. Uh, some of that was because of data protection that we couldn't keep. Um, details for people that didn't want us to um, but the, the, the numbers have decreased quite substantially and we can't ignore that um, there obviously have been uh, people who have passed away or people who have left um, and that, that will contribute to it but uh, the, the numbers have gone down quite a lot the, we have had a few, quite a few new members over the past few years, um, and that's quite encouraging. But actually quite a few of those have been people transferring from other churches uh, to Clermont. Um, and there's only been a very few who have actually made the, their first profession of faith. And I think that's where we really need to um, concentrate our, our, our focus on. Um, and actually when... In the last wee while with the pandemic and churches not being open, church buildings not being open, um, there seems to have been quite uh, an interest in online services. Um, I would assume from people who would, wouldn't even think about walking into a church on a Sunday morning if they've never been there before. Um, but there has been much, much more interest in, in online services. And I think that's something that we need to take hold of. and think about for, for the future and I'm sure that's one of the first things Kirk Session will be talking about when we get back to, to meeting. Sure it will be, yeah. Yeah, no, I agree completely. It's uh, There are opportunities there, definitely. So, will you miss it? Will you miss being session clerk? Is there any regrets? It's... Well, I'm not going to scream no. But, <laughs> um, yes and no, I think. Um, I, I have enjoyed the, the time I've been session clerk. Um, it's, it, I said originally that I would do 10 years till I was 70, and everybody now knows that I'm 70. Um, and uh, if God willing, I would do that. So God seemed to be willing, so he's kept me fairly fit and fairly sane over the past 10 years. Um, it's 
if, in fact, if, if I hadn't been involved so much with the death ministry with Richard Durno and, and others, then I probably would have carried on for a bit longer. But uh, I think most of the, the folk in Claremont know that the death ministry is my first priority and, and always will be, and it's a job I love doing. Um, so, yes, I've, I'll, I'll miss it in some ways, I think, you know, um, but uh, the, the deaf work will, will take priority, as, as well as still, of course, being part of, of the session as just a, an ordinary elder. Um, I've, I've got no regrets about, uh, about anything um, to do with being, being session clerk and definitely um, no regrets about handing over to, to Maura Drumgold. I think it was a, an excellent choice, Gordon, when they, you, you thought you thought of Morag. Um, she's organised, she's committed, but most importantly, I think she's a, a dedicated follower of Jesus. Um, she's done a fair bit of work with the, the safeguarding coordinator, so she's been in touch with 121 and with Presbytery, so knows how to cope with them too, which I'm sure will be an asset. Um, so I just I have no no regrets at all, um, and I just I just wish um, Morag every success, and I'm sure she'll she'll do an excellent job. Um, and it's it's just what really just want to say now. Thanks to everyone who has helped me through it, who has supported me and encouraged me, um, made sure I didn't have too many disasters. There's always been someone there to, to help and to, to, to be there. It's not a job you can do on your own. Uh, I just like your job, Gordon. It's not something that a minister can do on their own. It's, it's teamwork and support that, that really um, thing is. So I really value the, the friendship and the fellowship that I've had over these years and, and will continue to value it. Well, this is, uh, this is not an official handover or anything of that sort. That, that has to come. And whenever session um, is able to, to meet again. Um, but in the meantime, um, thanks for um, so much that you, for all that you've done and, and that it really has meant, meant so much. And, um, and I can echo what you're saying about the congregation and teamwork. Um, mm -hmm. One of the great things um, for me in the time of being here at Claremont which is more than 16 years now, um, mm -hmm. it has been just how great the office bearers have been, um, session clerk, mm -hmm. clerks of the board, treasurer, and, and so on, and, and, and in many other different jobs as well. We've had fo property folks doing really, really great work, and it's it's great for, to have a team like that doing it. So in the meantime, thanks very much. And as I say, there probably will be an official handover. To come and okay. okay. Cheers. Thank you. Dorothy Lynn, one of the Brownie leaders here in Claremont. I have been asked to give an update on the Rainbows, Brownies and Guides who meet in our church and how they are coping with lockdown. As you know, we had to stop meeting in the middle of March, at the same time as the church services stopped, although they continue now online. At that time, we were doing activities preparing for Mother's Day and Easter, but it came to an abrupt halt. Since then, we have all kept in touch with our girls by the wonders of modern technology. The Rainbow Mums keep in touch by WhatsApp with the leaders. The Brownie Mums keep in touch by text or Facebook with their leaders. The Brownies have continued completing badge work that was started before lockdown and nearly all of my girls could give the Great British Bake Off a run for its money because they have completed the baking badge, which has been a challenge at this time getting flour. The guys and rangers similarly keep in touch by social media and have been participating in various online activities that Girl Guiding has been encouraging the girls to do from home, as well as badge work that they can do too. There have been national initiatives, community action and assistance, and well-being to name but a few. We realise that for the older girls this has been the most difficult time, as a lot of them should have been sitting important exams just now, so we let them know that we are here to listen if they need us. Loan guiding or independent guiding has always been a thing, especially for girls who live in remote areas where no units meet, but still want to be a part of the organisation. This current situation has made us all realise how difficult it can be not being with the rest of a group and makes us appreciate the friendship that we have that we are missing at the moment. 
We hope that when the situation improves and we begin to meet together again, we can continue to help the girls grow to be their best and face the challenges ahead of them. Stay safe everyone and take care.